Hey now! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Bobby back! From a different... <laughs> From a difference is doing it. And look, this time, we are back with another episode of your and my favorite series here on these TDD airwaves. Other Basement Distires. <laughs> that graphic will never get old to me. Listen, here's the reason why it's my favorite series on our channel. It's because, like, it really shows off how long and strong and doing it like Donkey Kong the TDD Army really is. And, like, this series, Other Bits, Other Basement Distires. Like, all the way back to the beginning, a little over two and a half years ago, featuring Dead Bird Designs, has been showcasing some of those five-star doers, like, carrying the flag and leading that charge from the front lines. Today's guest instructor for other amazing designers, no different. She is another five-star doer who has been carving out her own little spot in what makes disc dying so awesome and has helped put it on the rise. I am speaking, of course, of the lovely and talented Miss Emily Riley of Disc Dies by Emily. Mm. Now, like I know that a bunch of you out there are already familiar with her work, and a reel of it probably just started in your mind's eye when I mentioned her name. But for the rest of you out there who this is an introduction, I snagged a whole bunch of pictures off of her IG page that'll start flipping over my super high-tech microphone right here for you. It doesn't take much more than a disc or two into this reel to see that Emily obviously knows what she's doing when it comes to prettying up plastic. You'd think, looking at these discs, that she's been at it for like years on end, okay? But in fact, she just passed her one year anniversary dabbling with the dyes just back in September. And in that like really short amount of time, she's managed to master a whole bunch of different techniques and styles that, you know, are all like, <laughs> but it's this sand dollar style here that I saved for the end of the reel that really has been her signature and the, like the fuel behind her ascension up through the ranks. Okay, here's what I took from the footage while I was cutting it all up before we get this show started. Like, she really zooms all the way in on her process and methods as she's going through this. And I'm not like talking about with the camera, I mean with her commentary, which like there's times where she takes it super deep into some of the details that might seem like minutia at the time, but then come the end, make all the difference in the world with the results, which like that's it's next level awesome she's gonna walk all of you through two examples of her signature sand dollar design and not just like the how to's of every step of the process that she takes but the why's behind all the decisions that she's making along the way as well and frankly like in a way that's really easy to understand listen i could keep going on and on about emily in this tutorial but i'm starting to feel like you've already picked up what i'm putting down she's a rock star and you got some really good stuff about to happen to you. I, I have more of the blah, 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 blah crap, but I've gotten myself just as excited with all the hype, and I'm ready to get this show started as well. So I'm gonna save the rest of my babbling for the other side of it. We can pick up where we left off there, which means, without further ado, here is the lovely and talented Miss Emily Riley of Disguised by Emily sharing her sand dollar style. Let's do it. <clears throat> hey guys, Emily here from Disguised by Emily. Uh, thanks to The Difference is doing it for organizing this for me. Um, you guys can find me on Instagram at disc.diesbyemily and then also on Etsy at disdiesbyemily. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how I make my sand dollar dies that look like these guys. According to Paul Macbeth's unboxing video, they look like flowers, I'll take it. But before I get started, I do want to show you guys some of my materials and then some of the other tools I use in my process. And so the whole time I do use clear glue bed dyes and I've been using the Elmer's glue 
I do know the generics, like the ones from Michaels and Amazon, people have used and have found successful. In terms of my dyes, I do use ProChem and the eye dye polys. Make sure these eye dye polys say poly. The natural dyes of these will not uh, penetrate the plastic of the discs. In terms of my dye ratio, I do not have one. I pretty much, let me grab a bottle. I just dump in enough powder that you have left over on the bottom and till you get the saturation of this to the color that you think looks good. I've never had a problem with them not working. So as long as I have extra, maybe I'll stir it up a little bit before I get started, let it separate again, but those have always worked for me. So that's pretty much the actual materials that I use. In terms of the tools you're gonna need, Definitely a pan. Uh, I know people use ultimate lids and other frisbees. The nine inch cake pan's perfect. Thrift stores, Walmart, they're really easy to find. I should mention, when you go to mix the dyes with the acetone, make sure you're using 100% acetone, not, you know, nail polish remover maybe. After you pour the glue out, a lot of people, you'll notice some bubbles. A lot of people use a torch and torch all the bubbles out. I do do that, but then I also like using toothpicks. These guys are gonna be like my best friends during this process. You can use them to pop the little bubbles, but then also get dirt and anything else that may fall into your bed. You can pick it out with the toothpicks. Also popsicle sticks. When you get little clusters of the bubbles, you can just scoop the whole cluster out with a popsicle stick. I think it's really easy instead of possibly burning the top of the glue bed with a torch by trying too hard. So besides that, extra things you're gonna need I like having duct tape, but I make duct tape handles for the discs when I go to roll it into the bed. It makes it a lot easier to hold. I have dropped the disc doing it by ho just holding the rim. But besides duct tape, paper towels, extra cleanup, extra acetone on the side is always good. And then after you apply your dye, I use tubes to kind of blow the dye around so I don't have to use a straight straw and like hurt my neck or spin the pan too much. I think that is about all the tools, so I'm gonna switch cameras so we can get started and I can show you my first example. And if any other tips or tricks pop up during that, I will definitely let you guys in on those. So sit tight while I switch these over. Okay, you guys, so for my first example, I'm gonna be dyeing this Paige Pierce Passion. I love this disc. Um, this is like a light greenish swirly color and we're gonna do the sand dollar dye on this. I'm gonna be using, I dye black, blue, turquoise, yellow, and then Pro Chem Neon Lemon Zest and the Neon Key Lime. I already put glue in here. There are only like two bubbles, so I just popped them real fast with a toothpick. And then before I get started, one other thing I forgot to mention is having like a little glass jar, extra little glass jars on the side so you can kind of mix all these colors and make up your own colors as you go. And as you can see, I like working with a lot of different colors. It's just, it makes it way more fun for me. So I will say this is a very uh, repetitive process. You're pretty much finding the center point of your bedpan here. And it's one drop at a time. You can see the dye right when it goes down, it spreads out. And then as the acetone evaporates, it gets way more translucent and then you kind of lose it. But we're just gonna keep going here with turquoise. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this. These little speckles right here. I shook up the dye just slightly. I didn't mean to, but that means some of the powder got mixed in in my little dropper as I'm dropping it down. That's totally fine. I don't really care. It's not enough that it's gonna ruin anything but I may let the bottle of dye sit for another minute or two, maybe not that long, but until it separates a little more. And I'm gonna pull the dye from like the top of the bottle, not where all the dye powder is at the bottom. The slower you apply your dye to the pan, the more defined edges of the dye you're gonna get. If you put a bunch of colors in at the same time, the acetone's not gonna have time to evaporate and then those colors are gonna mix, which can be a really cool effect. It just depends what you're going for. Right now, I'm going really slowly, just so I feel like there's a separation in each ring of dye I'm putting down, so then it'll be more saturated. And it'll take up a little bit more space as it pushes out each ring. Okay, 
Okay, as you guys can see, there's a dot in the middle that starts to form. So when the acetone keeps hitting right there, it forms like a dry, a dry spot. So if you wait a little bit, you can watch more of the acetone evaporate. And then I just take a toothpick right in the center and you can actually twist that area like up onto the toothpick and then pull it straight out and it shouldn't really affect your uh, design at all. It's not actually thick enough for me to pull out. I know I'm gonna mess it up there, but that's something as you continue to do this, you'll like pick up on and learn. The only reason you wouldn't want that there to keep going is because it forms these little ridges. So when you go to put a drop of dye down on it that you want to form a circle, it's it's not gonna form a circle because it's coming down as like different waterfalls through that dot and then it's gonna spread out all at different points. Not what you're looking for for this dye. Could be very cool for something else though. All right, I think that center dot's getting to a point that I can pull out. If you like gently blow across the top of the glue surface, it kind of helps move the air and uh, make the acetone evaporate faster as well. I'm just twisting it onto the toothpick and I'm pulling straight out. You can see when the dye goes down, it starts to push out initially. And then as the acetone evaporates, it kind of sucks back into the center. I can tell the acetone in the middle is getting a li little bit heavy on top of that center dot. So I'm gonna wait and let that dry out before I keep going. So that center blue ring that's darker doesn't then spread out way too much. In general, I am probably holding the dropper anywhere from a quarter inch to a half inch above the surface of the glue. The further away that you drop the die from, the bigger the dot the die will want to make. And this is where those extra jars come in handy because I have a different blue color that's a little bit darker just to try to get a little gradient going from the eye dye turquoise to the blue and now to this. Which, okay, I've had this happen before too. The combination of these dye colors sometimes allow for this not to expand properly. So we'll see what happens here. Eventually it works. That looks like a cool looking cell. Check that out. Okay, we gotta keep going. I can't know that. I can't know that right now. This is where I continue to go slowly. It will still want to expand in the circle. But see, I just did two in a row kind of quickly from kind of higher up, and it pushed more of that die out. Still in a circle. Okay, so that mixed die in my head wasn't mixing well with the just eye dye blue. So I went and applied more eye dye blue and then before the surface really had time to dry out, I went and added this dye so it both, being before they both evaporate, they're able to mix and then still expand in the circle. I don't know if you guys can see this happening. Okay, there's our recovery. That was pretty smooth. Now I'm going to wait so I can get that center dot out. As I said, it's a, it's a very slow process, but totally worth it. Okay, so the black, since it's so dark, obviously it can do some major damage if you mess up. I do try to go really slow from the center. Like that was really, really close to the surface of the glue and it's still spread out really quickly, but it stopped, it didn't get too big. So I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna let this close up a little bit before it goes crazy, because looking at it now, it's still gonna wanna go crazy. Okay, I noticed a little break right here. If you guys can see that. Go back to using your toothpick. You can literally just bring this together. This part definitely takes patience, but if you wanna, 
ever so slightly pull these in. You can't do big swoops. You're gonna mess up the circle in the center. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna let that evaporate because I do not want any of the other colors really mixing with the black because that could do some damage to the design. You may be able to see the middle of this and how the dye is reacting. It's a very slow process, but again, it's worth it. So all your colors don't become a muddy mess. See, that's pretty fun, but now you gotta wait. If you add too much, you could overflow it over the edge and it'll mix and it won't look good. So just, just keep waiting. <laughs> As it starts to close in less as the acetone evaporates, you're, you'll know you're good to keep adding more dye. That means the black acetone is almost done evaporating, so there's not a lot of movement it can do. This outside ring is looking really cool. Sometimes I hate that I'm gonna change it, but it'll be worth it. Okay, so one trick I'm gonna do, I don't know if it's really a trick, but I don't know if you can tell on the camera, let me see. Okay, so the blue, the blue dye probably, probably goes like an inch from the edge of the pan, maybe a little more. That's gonna keep expanding, so in order to contain that a little bit, I am just going to put a ring of drops of dye around the outside, because those will try to expand. They don't have a lot of room to expand, but they're gonna hold that center circle, center rings together. I'm just gonna make a different color. I think I'm gonna go for a kind of darker blue. So that step is definitely not necessary, but if you are gonna do it, definitely do not do it first. Doing it first, it's just gonna get pushed out towards the edges and you're not gonna see it. I'm gonna give it a few more seconds and then it's whatever you want that very inside color to be. I think I'm just gonna go back to like a dark blue in there. Maybe I'll bring this dark outside border color into the very center to tie it together. That very first dot inside of the black, I just do very slowly, very, very close to the surface again, because I don't want it to spill out and spill over and ruin the whole design. So literally for this entire dye, except for the border, every single drop of dye is getting applied in the same spot. Oh, one thing I can note while we're waiting for that to evaporate is on the back of the disc, before I roll it into the bed, how I was talking about duct tape, uh, I make these handles. So it's easy to hold, and then you can just roll it in with the handles. Okay, I'm gonna let that evaporate. Literally, you could, do, you could wait 10 to 15 minutes if you wanted to, and then I will come back and we're gonna blow out the design. And now for the fun part. Like I said before, I don't really use a straw. I try to use the bendy tubes. When doing this, because you wanna keep it very centered, do not work counterclockwise. You have to think when you're doing this, you're displacing the dye in the glue. So when you move it somewhere, where you're moving it to, that dye is going to be moved somewhere else. So don't work in any circular pattern or the whole dye is gonna go that way. All right, and I don't take it all the way necessarily. We're gonna go a little bit and it's gonna start to close up, but then as you keep going, you're gonna work back and forth in opposites and then it'll all kind of spread out evenly. At least that's what we're hoping for.
don't know if you guys can see, like, as I started to go that way, this little curve started to pull in. So I just blew the die this direction and pushed it out a little bit. And you're going to keep wanting to do that and go back and forth until this is all pushed out. So once you have these five points spread out evenly, in order to form the petal shapes, basically you're doing the opposite. I try to avoid blowing from this outside ring of color I laid down. If you can kind of see this blue line here, I'm gonna kind of start moving the die from here, just in a line inwards. And again, not in any counterclockwise, clockwise pattern, kind of attack it from opposites. As you do this, you'll kind of be able to see the black lines start to get pushed in even as you move the die from an inch and a half away. Okay, and once you got those other five points flown inwards, I just kind of went back, touched up any weird lines what you can do, feel free to do. Like, if I think I want that little curve to be just a little bit smoother, just be really particular where you're moving the glue. And you can smooth things out if you want to. Okay, so here's the, you know, moment of truth almost. You gotta take the opaque disc, Find the center point and just hope and pray you put it down in the center. That wraps up that one. So let me reconfigure the space, get a new pan, and we're gonna move on to example number two. Okay, so for the second example, I have this clear Buzz SS Z Flex. I have the tape handles, obviously. I'm not gonna do as much commentating in this one. I'm just gonna use a bunch of different colors, and try to do a rainbow sand dollar die of sorts, and uh, we'll see what it looks like in the end. I kinda wanna see how these colors turn out on this clear, clear plastic. So a little bit experimental, but hope you guys enjoy it. I am using a darker cake pan in this one, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I don't know if it's gonna help you guys see it better. You'll see it better once I get more dye on here. I just saw a little dusty piece of string fly into the surface. Too thick. I got it. I'm starting off with uh, the Pro Chem Fluorescent Pink which is why you cannot see it that well. Now I'm moving on to eye dye yellow and I'm not sure if that's gonna help you see it either. So sorry about the beginning of this, you guys. I'm basically going for a warmer outside of the sand dollar or flower and then a turquoise to purple inside. And then the very center is gonna be more of a neon Pro Chem Lemon Zest and Key Lime together for a like kind of neon center. I'm interested to see what that will look like on that clear plastic. What I'm doing there is a lot of times it does want to just attach itself to the toothpick and pull itself right out, but um, Sometimes it's just too heavy. I didn't spin it onto the toothpick quite enough, so I just pinch the end of it and bring it up, so. I don't have a mess or catastrophe. I would say that I've gone anywhere from four to eight max drops of black for these rings. Um, it's really up to you, obviously. I just don't want a predominantly black pattern. Definitely not in this buzz either because the buzz stamp is black, so I don't want it to blend in too much. I 
I dropped something. This is where, okay. I'm gonna use two toothpicks and hopefully pick it straight up. This happens. Here I can already tell that this like first black ring is going to be bigger than I want it to be. I'm going to have one of those wide petal designs most likely, so I'm going to go ahead and do that outside ring of dye now. I'm purposely dropping the dye from maybe three quarters of an inch up because I know it's going to spread out more so it'll hold the you know center of the dye in there more. I'm thinking the extra ring of dye I did on the border kind of helped contain this more than I expected and it probably will still be a slimmer, more sand dollar looking shape. All right, so I waited another 10 minutes and now we're ready to blow out the second design. Okay, for the sake of this video, I'm going to try to clean up that little spill right there. I'm not quite sure what that is, but to me it's obvious. Let's see if I can clean it up. Since it's just on the surface, right where it is, just roll that little little bit of black dye right there onto this toothpick and I think it'll work. Or I can just drag it over a little bit. Eh, good enough. I'll make an attempt. If I feel like it's not gonna be very good, just leave it. You're better off to leave it than to continue to mess with it. All right, now I gotta line this up. Forget these mids are big, it'll be a little off, but we're good. It's fine, I see the bubbles. This is a pretty flat mid, so it happens. All right, we'll check back in on these in 24 hours. I do not use any heat and I've never really had a problem, but 24 hours, room temperature, we'll check back tomorrow. Okay guys, we are back after 24 hours with the results from our two um, examples. So for our first one, we had the passion. Here it is. I love the ocean feel of this one. Definitely a sand dollar vibe. Um, we have the outside ring of color here that kind of helps keep the dye in the center. Some bold black lines. You can see the greens in here, the darker blues in the center that I mimicked from the outside ring. But I think this one turned out really, really cool. So there's that one. And then for the Buzz SS, let me grab this background. And here's this one. So in the translucent plastics here, definitely did not take as much as some of the opaque plastics, ESP plastics. This definitely reacts more like champion plastic. The clearer ones have a harder time absorbing all of the dye, I think. But I think it's still really cool. I love the thin lines on this. You can see the warmer tones, you know, on the outside of, of the sand dollar design, the cooler tones on the inside here. And then the neon center did not work out on this plastic. I kind of expected that, but you know, now it's confirmed but I still really love the look of this one as well. So these are the two examples. 
both of these did sit for 24 hours at room temperature. I do not use any additional heat. I have heard it does work maybe more on these, the Z-Flex, the Champion Discs, and maybe better on this plastic. But these are the Sand Dollar dies. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want to say thank you again to The Difference is doing it for organizing this for me. And then if you want to check out more of my dies and what's available from me, check out my Etsy at Disc Dies by Emily. And then stay up to date on everything I'm working on and new discs that are coming at uh, my Instagram at disc.dies by Emily. So thank you guys again, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I don't know what that felt like to you, but from where I'm sitting, that was a nonstop express ride right into downtown Buddha. <laughs> I told you that that was like packed chuck full of all sorts of the good stuff right up to the brim. And now all of it, every step and the whys behind all of them. They are just laid out in front of you, waiting for you to take them and to whip one of those pretty pieces of plastic up for yourself. Or maybe like to use that as a springboard for the next crazy design that we're all trying to learn. Like the only thing that's left for you is a little bit of doing it. We can't go any further without sending big ups and so many thanks out to Emily for sharing all of her sand dollar secrets and more with us, which listen, I'll remind all of you, these are the same sand dollar secrets that she uses to make her income with. <laughs> You know, there's another like really fancy word for that kind of information that some people like to use. It's proprietary. <laughs> and, you know, without naming any names, for what it's worth, like there's a number of disc dyers out there that have turned down the opportunity to be on this series saying, I don't see the value in sharing all of my secrets with everyone, which like, I'm not saying that to put any of them down, okay? I get it, I guess. I'm saying that to highlight how awesome and special it is when someone like Emily is willing to share those secrets with all of us just for the sake of rising the tide, right? And now the whole fleet has been lifted. It, <laughs> it's, yeah! Emily, thank you again. If you're looking for like a really great way to say thank you to Emily yourself, I got a good idea for you. Go straight from this video to Emily's Etsy store. It looks like this so that you know you're in the right place when you get there. And then when you do, fill that hole in your bag with a sick new custom from Disc Dies by Emily. I promise you'll be happy when you did. Like pinky swear, promise. And then in the process, this will be like one of those killing two birds with one stone situations. You'll be landing a sick new piece of plastic that you'll get to show off to all of your Huck buddies. And at the same time, you'll be like supporting those people that are helping to grow this sport and the weird little hobby within it that we all love so much the right way. Now, I know that there is more of you out there that are vibing on this exact same wavelength. And just like Emily, like you have something really special to share. Like this is the part of the show where I say to you, look, hit your brother from another turntable mother up. <laughs> Let's do this. Now, like I got more footage, right? Already on the cutting floor. And pretty soon you're going to be seeing Daddy Mac dies on other basement distairs. And I got a bunch more on the way in. But listen, I've got the fever. <laughs> and... I need more. So like, if you're sitting there watching this video right now and you're wondering to yourself like, wait, am I, am I one of those people that Old Man Cobbers is talking about right now? <laughs> the answer is probably yes. So hit the buttons, do the things, send me a line. And let's make it happen, Cap'n. And we'll start rising the tide a little bit more for all these ships in the TDD Army fleet. That is what I'm talking about. Mm. Okay, the only thing we've got left is what's coming up on these T. Diddy airwaves in the next few weeks and months. I just mentioned that we got Chris Tannis 
of Daddy Mac Dies, who's going to be the next guest instructor on our other Better Than Desire series. Like, I'm already cutting that one up. It's on pace to be ready for all of you sometime in the middle of January. And I've, I've started already started recording the footage for the Clara Chuck demo and review that I've been promising you guys. This is the super center it up thing. That one is right around the corner as well. And then I'm working on, uh, so I'm, I'm sorting through a couple different ideas for our next cross-platform live stream thing. <laughs> High Tech Bobby, which you can look for that. That'll be dropping right around the turn of the new year. And then, like, you're all going to see me. I mean, if you haven't gotten in on it, now's the time. But next week, for the results of our holiday disc art giveaway featuring Cousin Eddie here. So... Like, what I'm trying to say is that the roster, like, it's packed full of, like, a whole bunch of stuff that's going to help us start off 2022 with some real doing it. And with that, we have come to the end of our time together today, kiddies. And really, I guess the end of our time together this year, 2021, all done. Probably a year that most of you are happy to be closing the book on and putting in the rearview mirror, but... I can't lie to you guys. Like, 2021 was awesome for Old Man Cobbers. Like, really. And frankly, it's the fault of all you nutbags out there in the TDD Army. So, thank you for making 2021 such an awesome year for us over here. And, like, while we're on the subject, a huge thank you again to Emily of Disc Dies by Emily. Like, right now, now is the time that you should be taking your mouse and scrolling it down towards that link that I put into the description leading you straight to her Etsy store to show her some TD the Army love. Yeah! All right, I hope you guys enjoyed our time together today as much as I did. Happy New Year's to every hucker out there, and we'll be back with another dose for you before you know it. All right, until then, you better keep doing it. do yourself, and you better... Oh. Heartbreaker! Oh, no.